and, and uh, it will show you recently added data to Shodan. So what it'll do is it'll it'll show you a nice little um, symbol uh, over an area or city, or and, and then it'll show you the banner. So this is kind of a just nice kind of view of of things that have been re recently added. Let's talk about uh, applications of Shodan for penetration testing. So. John originally developed this as a as a marketing and research tool and it was not really specifically geared towards penetration testers or the hacking community but you can see I'm sure that most of you can see that there's certainly opportunities here to look through the data that's been collected in Shodan for opportunities for penetration testing so that's what I want to talk about before I go there I want to talk a little bit about ethics um, and yeah ethics and uh, just kind of go through a couple, you know, uh, hypothetical scenarios and kind of just go through some uh, questions that, that may come to mind. And I will say that when I did this test, when all the, all the, all the, um, all the things that I've done for the examples here were just done on my own. I was not authorized to do anything. So these are kind of rhetorical questions for you. Is it acceptable under any circumstances to view the configuration of a device that requires no authentication to view? So if we quick click, click, click on one of these links and it takes us to a some sort of device and it logs us right in because there's no there's no authentication, is that okay to view that? What about viewing the configuration of the device if we used a default username and password to get into it? Or what about viewing the device if we used a unique username or password? What about changing the configuration of a device that we don't own or that we don't have authorization to use? So this is kind of a, a black to white spectrum and, and this is where I would put these questions on there. You may disagree with it but I think most of you would generally agree with the general placement. So viewing the configuration of a device that requires no authentication. I think that's pretty, pretty clear. I think you could view that. You're not changing anything. You're just looking. There was no authentication required. You just clicked on a result and went right in there. Using a default username and password, well, I think you're getting into a you know darker shade of gray here because despite the fact that they're using a def default username and password, you're s there's still some authentication mechanism that's trying to keep you out. That's just as far as I went, by the way. I'll show you an example of that one later. Um, using a unique username and password somehow that you captured, I think that's fairly black. And then also changing configuration of the device that you don't have permission to do, I and mean, it's fairly black as well. Like I said, I went to about the middle, so I wouldn't go any further than that. But that's up to you. I think that, that using Shodan for penetration testing requires uh, some basic knowledge of banners like I talked about. And also it's very useful to you to know HTTP status codes. And you all know these, but I think it's important to review them because uh, we can use them to actually filter out results. Um, we know that banners typically uh, talk about the services that they're running and the versions that they're running. Um, I've talked to f very few people who have ever spoofed banners. Some people do, but most people don't. Uh, so we're assuming here that the banners aren't, sp aren't being spoofed. Just a quick overview of, of some of some HTTP status codes that we will see and how they can be useful to us. 200 OK, request succeeded. This is typically our best result because this means we're going to be able to view the page without any uh, authentication at all. A uh, 301 and 302 are uh, moved or found, and we'll, we'll see that those are not terribly useful to us. 401 unauthorized requires authentication and then 403 is a forbidden. In other words, we can't go there. So what is, how does that apply to us? Well, again, 200 OK is, is really what we're looking for because that's going to allow us to view a page without seeing anything else. It's not going to ask us for a password, probably, at least not to view that page. Um, 301 and 302, typically for, in, in the case of Shodan, it doesn't really provide us with a lot of data. Yes, could you follow the result where it's moved to, but of, typically it's, it's kind of a just running into the dark without really knowing where you're going. Uh, so we can use the filters, uh, the, the, the Boolean logic to filter these out. 401 unauthorized is typically saying no, you, can, you don't have permission to view this page. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that we can't get there. Um, and a 401 unauthorized on a web banner will typically have a www authenticate line and that will typically indicate to us the presence of a pop-up box. So if we go to one of these, we'll get a pop-up box asking for a username and password. 
403 forbidden, typically we, there's, no, there's some reason that we can't view the page. And it's also important to note that some banners advertise defaults. We'll see banners that say default the password is 1234. Doesn't mean that they're using that, but it, it, they're at least telling us what it is. So that's useful data for us. So the first of my four case studies is the Cisco devices. And this is the first Cisco banner I found and I just wanted to show it as an example. The two boxes in red, uh, uh, squared in red are, the first one is a status code, so it's HTTP 401 unauthorized. And then we see a www authenticate basic realm level 15 or view access. I can tell you that when you see this, when you click on the result for this, you're going to get a pop-up box and it's going to ask you for a username and password. And if we don't have it, obviously we can't get to that page. Here's an example of a Cisco banner that, that is a 200 OK. Notice that it has, it does not have a www authenticate box and it also has a last modified box. When we put these side by side, we find that, that we find that um, it's the two lines, www authenticate and last modified are almost 99.9% per .9 mutually exclusive. So what does that mean for us? Well, Let's look at the results here. So this is as of last night. If I search Shodan for Cisco, I get 306,000 some devices. Um, the WW Authenticate, 253,000. Last modified, 5,800. And then only 31 that have both of those lines. So what that means is if we can get a 200 uh, OK with a Cisco, chances are that device is not going to require any authentication at all. In fact, we really have about 5,900 devices as of last night, Cisco devices on the internet publicly facing that require no authentication at all to view, change configurations, do whatever you want. You've already owned them. So let's take a look at one. S many of you will recognize this is the Cisco, uh, this is a Cisco switch and this is the HTML interface. And if we wanted to um, administer this interface or administer this device uh, at a certain level, we could click on um, one of these numbers right here. And whatever number of the level we want is what it will take us to. So surely if we click on level 15, which is like administrator access, it's going to then ask us for a pop-up, right? And it's going to, that's when we're, we're going to be stopped right there. No. It doesn't. So I haven't, I don't have my CCNA. I don't know what the commands are. Well, they're all right there for you. And they're hyperlinked for you. So if you want to do anything to this device and you don't even know the, the, CCN, the Cisco commands, you can just click on them. And there's a whole page here. You can see that the scroll bar is pretty small. So I mean, you could pretty much run anything. And I ran a few commands, but I just did some show commands because I didn't want to actually, I told you I was not going to change the configuration of a device. So this is the configure commands menu. We, we were able to get in there with no authentication at all. Here's the execute command menu. We can get in there without any configuration at all. I ran show running config and I got the running config. I ran show CDP neighbors. I went, let's see what else is around it. And I got some other devices. I won't go into uh, too many specific details, but um, people will generally say, well, I know this guy, he's doing a CCNA and he set up a router, so it's probably just one of those things, right? Well, some of them might be, and some of these are infrastructure devices belonging to ISPs, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. So what else is out there, Cisco devices? Well, this is a Cisco AirNet access point. This is just the home page though. If we went to one of the uh, setup pages or the security page, it probably would ask us for a username and password. Or it doesn't. So what do you want to do? Change it? Turn it off? Change the IP address? Yeah. Security page? No, nothing there either. They really should enable encryption or maybe we should enable it for them. Network interfaces, security, 
services. You want to turn on some services, turn off some services. So, okay, let's keep going. This is a Catalyst 2960 switch. This is the dashboard view. I, I, you know, if we went to the configuration view, it's going to ask us for a password, right? No, it's not going to. Some people are really good about labeling their ports. They'll tell you everything you want to know. Where they go to. I actually had one example that's not on here that was a, um, it was a real estate company in New York and they owned several buildings uh, and they had a switch that administered internet access to various businesses. And each one of their ports was like to XYZ company or to this company or to. So, I mean, and, and what about turning them off or just let's go half duplex for a day and see how their internet, you know. <laughs> and again, let me, let me be clear, I didn't change anything on these devices, but you could if you wanted to. You could. I mean, you, it's right there. Setup page. Yeah, I mean, whatever you want. Cisco uh, Security Device Manager Express. Configuration. Change the password. Change the IP address. Change the routing. Security. It's pretty much whatever you want. I mean, there are, like I said, there are probably, I don't know, five, six thousand of these devices out there on the internet. And that's just what Shodan is indexed. Shodan is not indexed the entire internet, large portions, but not the entire internet. So that's just what's, what's already been indexed. It's kind of scary. So second case study on default passwords. And this was the easiest search I did and I just searched for the words default password because I wanted to see what banners have the word default password in them. And again, let me caveat. This doesn't mean that that device is using that default password but at least they're telling us what it is. So, and how many people change them? Some people don't change them. So chances are some of these devices will be using them. So this is a lowest hanging fruit attack but of course, you know, let's try it. So this is the absolute first one I found. It's a 401. It has a WWW authenticate, basic realm, default password 1234, print sir, web port. It's a, it's a web interface for a printer. So we're probably going to get a pop-up box, right? So yes, it's not using a, it's, it doesn't mean it's using default password, but it's a possibility. But there, so we, we know that the default password could, is 1234. What about the username? Well, there's none listed. So what are our options? Well, a null username, right? Or admin or root, probably. So what do we get? Pop-up box. So what do I try first? I'm going to try a null username because they didn't list anything and I'm going to try 1234. But the chances that it's working the first time, it never works the first time. Or it does. <laughs> this device is, I mean, this is nothing big. It's, it's, this, it's the setup for a printer, but you know, what if you, you know, what do you want to do? Oh, by the way, all these, all these menus, all the, everything here is accessible now because even though we, it's the default password, we've effectively logged in, so we've, uh, we've authenticated. Occasionally, um, if your browser or your computer is not set up to display like foreign language stuff, sometimes you get these cr uh, codes and things. I found that if you don't know the language, and even if they do display the language, like it's Chinese or Japanese or whatever, typically the underlying HTML is still in English. So if you mouse over the links that you don't understand and look at the status bar, it will typically tell you what, you, what those things are. I mean, some of them are pretty obvious there. Well, I went after Cisco, so let's go after Huawei. I mean, they're, you know, probably what, number two, right? So instead of, I searched for Cisco before, but I want to search for um, Huawei. And this is where I use those um, exclusions of I don't want 400 codes, I don't want 300 codes. So I just did minus, I minused all of those. And the result is that I get all 200 OKs, which is exactly what I want. And it turns out that there's 283 or so Huawei results on the internet and almost all of them or at least a good, por 